and uh, you can also do a search for Cyrus Sassel online at Google and it will bring it up. Uh, basically Sassel is the authentication mechanism which Cyrus uses to validate or verify its users uh, and authenticate them. So we're going to actually use the documentation on Cyrus's own website to uh, to 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 do this. This, however, the documentation unfortunately is a little bit out of date for the current Fedora Core 22 uh, spin. So I'll show you those differences as we go along. Again, we've got the server installed uh, on a piece of hardware here in the lab. So I'm going to SSH into that server which is at 192.168.240.11 uh, the user that I'm going to be using is Sean I'm going to give it my super secret password and there we are so as you can see I've logged in there a couple of times as you can see the health of the server it's doing pretty well we've got plenty of headroom and looking at the process space you can see right now pretty much we don't have anything much running on it this is all kernel stuff um, basic operational stuff here we've got system D running we'll talk about that a little bit you've got network manager handling the interfaces um, and a few other things going on and obviously SSH for us to be able to remote into it so let's clear out of here and the first, uh, the first thing is um, yum is no longer the installer for Fedora Core 22. You can use it. It'll give you a little bit of a warning. The actual command now is DNF. It works pretty much the same. In fact, looks and feels and smells the same. I really don't know why they just changed the name. Probably some reason for it. We'll find out some point later on maybe. As soon as I run that command, of course, it tells me that hey, you need to be super user to run it. So all the commands that we're going to issue are prefaced with sudo or sudo or super user do. Um, so super user do dnf install and it's going to ask me for a password. Now this isn't the root password, this is my password uh, as the user. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to tell me that these are now the packages it's going to install why it installs the SNMP agent libs I don't know probably because there's a dependency there for one of those packages we could probably go figure it out not a big deal though uh, SNMP simple network management protocol is basically a tool by which you can get metrics from the server you can either pull them or push them from the server that tell you things like CPU uh, CPU utilization, fan speeds, temperature, input output on the network interface, um, basically anything that has to do with the health of the server and also whether the server is up or not. So SNMP is a great tool to use to monitor your servers um, with some product like Observium or Cacti or many of the other SNMP enabled uh, softwares that you can use to monitor the server. It's just a protocol. So in this case we hit yes or Y for yes, we hit enter, it downloads the packages. Now I happen to have already gone through this process once, so it is downloading one of the packages again, no problem. And then it runs through the installation. And once it verifies that everything's looking good, it's done. And it was that simple. We now have the Cyrus IMAP server and we have the SASL authentication mechanism and some utility uh, applications with it including this net SNMP library. So the first thing it's asking us to do here is to the second thing it's asking us to do here is to change the password for Cyrus. Now I'm just going to use test one two th uh, I'm just going to use test one two three here um, obviously because I don't really want to use a real password uh, that we would use in here and also this is a lab environment I really don't want to spend time with the password but if this was a production environment we'd probably be using uh, a you know 12 to 16 alphanumeric maybe special characters password 
uh, which we would not digitally reproduce any place else. So we hit enter. All authentications are to, are, are updated. I I like the fact that you know it it actually will look at the password and tell you if it's weak or not. If it's really weak, it's going to give you a warning like bad password, password fails the dictionary attack, it's too simplistic or systemic. Um, test one, two, three. A lot of people use it. So once we've done that, it's now telling us to start the service by issuing the command service sassel auth d start. Basically, it wants us to start the authentication mechanism first. This is where it gets a little bit different. The actual command in uh, in Fedora Core 22 is now systemctl. You say systemctl uh, start. So you tell it what you want to do first and then you tell sassel auth d um, and this is where uh, th there was a little bit of a change in there's been a little bit of a change and an upheaval in the linux world regarding system 5 versus system d or sys5 versus system d uh, where before we used to use init scripts in the um, in the init d directory so you'd, you'd have some scripts then were point you know had uh, symbolic links to them from other directories and then when the system was starting you would have init d start and then it would go through these scripts and it would start the different services the mechanism has changed a little bit uh, in Fedora Core 22 I think it started a while back in Fedora Core 18 if I'm not mistaken or actually even earlier than that where we use system d which is actually a full demonized program that it's got a lot of features and people are upset because it's trying to it's it's doing a lot of things that um, that perhaps would be better served if they were done independently but it's got a lot of good features in it for example if a if a service crashes out or if a, if it stops responding uh, system d is able to restart that service or it actually can wait on dependencies so if some service needs to come up first versus uh, and it needs to wait for that service to launch before it launches the the de what depends on that service it can actually do that so it's got some benefits um, probably has some minuses maybe I think it's more because people don't really understand it and the people who are developing it are kind of a little bit of a snobbish about the way they're developing it so there's a lot of animosity towards it but it works well so in this case the command would be sudo systemctl start sasoloth service and it's done. Now, uh, instead of using check config, what we do is we use the word load. Uh, I'm forgetting the command. Systemctl minus minus help. Uh, what was I? What did I forget? I'm sorry. It's enable, not load. Um, let's clear our screen. Um, and enable is the old is what this check config sasoloth uh, check config sasoloth the on would do. So check config would go and create the symbolic links uh, in those resource directories. So based on your run level, what services are coming up or not, check config would add this uh, script to the default run levels. Here. Um, System D does pretty much the same thing. It creates a symbolic link from the multi-user targeted wants, um, or it creates it creates a symbolic link to this file, which uh, is the actual script which runs the. It's not the script, but it's the um, it's the kind of the INI file, if you will, for doing that. So basically, if we look at that file, it says. This is the description of the service. Um, this is where the PID file is, and it has an environment file. And if we look at the environment file, you'll notice that the exec start or the command line that gets run gets run with these parameters, which are defined in this config in this environment file. So it loads this environment file, and then it runs this program and uh, it keeps its PID here and it monitors to see if this program crashes for any reason or is not running and of course if it had any um, 
prerequisites, it would first run those before it got that going. Anyway, got too much too deep into that. So now our SASL authentication mechanism is running. Now, it wants us to do a test of the mechanism. So SASL, SASL, SASL uh, has a test SASL auth D program which lets you test to see if users can actually log in. In this case we give it our password, test123. Okay, success. So now we know we can authenticate with this user. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually start the IMAP services. Now I'm going to actually use what it gives us because I want to show you what happens. So when we run this it actually tells you it's redirecting you to use this system CTL start Cyrus dash IMAP D dot service. So again, this is an inevitability in um, in Linux that we're all going to be moving to system D. Almost all of the distros have uh, moved to system D. I think you can still at some level use the old init scripts, but everybody's done this and again I just ran check config Cyrus IMAPD on to let you know that forwarding request to this in which then goes by and creates this symbolic link so you can use these commands if you wanted to how long that's going to be available to you uh, in the future God only knows so now the last thing left for us to do is to test to make sure that our Cyrus IMAP daemon is running and functioning. We run a test. It asks us for our password. We give it our password. Authenticated security strength 128, all this stuff. And so now we know that our IMAP daemon is running. And of course, we can, uh, no, what it is, quit. And we can just control C out of there. Um, so we were connected actually to the IMAP service. And if we now run, we can see a couple of new processes running on our server. So we have multiple instances of the SASL auth daemon running. So this is the authentication mechanism which is used. And as you can see, we have multiple um, instances of the Cyrus and, and the, some of these are a little bit different if you notice one of them is the actual main program itself uh, I don't know what the idle D is I am not familiar with that one but these are this is an IMAP daemon using non-secure this is an IMAP daemon using the secure pop3 daemon uh, pop3 daemon using secure and as you can see it has multiple instances for different mechanisms so we now can connect to this uh, server using the IMAP protocol and we can use uh, or we can use the pop protocol either one will work for us